What's up guys? Instead of gameplay this morning, since we are waiting on Kamigawa Neon Dynasty to arrive, I figured we'd go through the set and talk about some of my favorite cards, some of the cards that I cannot wait to get my hands on to build around in this new set. Now, to be clear, I am just picking some of my favorite cards. This is not necessarily to say these cards are the best or they're going to be top tier one decks. They are just cards that I find really fun, I think are going to be fun to build around, and that I literally cannot wait to get my hands on. <laughs> Before we jump in, I should break this down just very, very quickly. What we're going to be doing is picking my favorite card, my favorite build around card from each of the colors, from multicolor, from artifact, and then from lands. Now, crucially, when we get to the lands portion of this, we'll have a little bit of a caveat there, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Don't worry. For now, let's jump right into white. Kicking off, we have one of my absolute favorites and a card genuinely that I cannot wait to build around. Guys, it's Brilliant Restoration. Brilliant Restoration is three and four white, which is a lot for a sorcery speed card that says return all enchantments and artifacts from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, hear me out on this because I know this is an expensive card, but it's a very, very powerful card. We have already got some amazing enchantments and artifacts in standard, and bringing them all back for one massive turn seems really, really powerful. Now, currently, a lot of the enchantments we do see in Standard are things that provide long-term value, so you want to continuously play the game, continuously gain value over a series of turns, and so that lends this card much more into, I think, more of a control, maybe even self-mill strategy, where you control the game, you handle the game as far as you can get, and then play this for a massive, massive amount of value. We'll obviously see how this shakes out. I'm not necessarily super confident that this is going to be a tier one deck, but it is a really fun card. And again, just one of my favorites from white. Now, moving on to blue, to absolutely nobody's surprise, we have Jenga Taxis Progress Tyrant. The original Jenga Taxis was one of my all time favorite cards. I love it in reanimator strategies, things like that. This obviously lends itself to a different kind of strategy. But first, let's actually talk through the card. So it is 5 and 2 blue for a 5-5 five, five legendary Phyrexian Praetor. And the ability says, whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. Additionally, it says, whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability also triggers only once each turn. What's really nice about this is it already gives you just added value to the things that you would normally play in a deck anyway. If you're playing a control deck or a big spells deck, this allows you to copy those later in the game. Additionally, though, it really cuts down on the interaction that your opponent can have because they're going to have to double up on things to even get rid of Jenga Taxis. Inherently, he protects himself. What I mean by that is if they're to sweep, for instance, or just burn them out or use a removal spell, they have to have at least two to actually get through it because the first one is going to get countered immediately. Now, crucially, they could just play a, you know, bum spell, something that really doesn't matter initially just to get rid of that counter, but you're still getting extra value. It will always be at least a two for one, and that's just really good value. Not to mention, it's just pretty awesome to have Jenga Taxis back in standard, so I'm, I'm kind of stoked about that. Moving on to black, we have potentially one of my favorite cards of the set as well, and that is Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. Nashi is really sick. It's one and two black for a 3-2 legendary rat ninja creature that does feature the returning mechanic ninjutsu. Now, the cost on ninjutsu is three and a black, and if you don't already know, you can return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand, put this card onto the battlefield tapped from your hand, it's also attacking. Now, whenever Nashi deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of each player's library. Until the end of the turn, you can play one of those cards. Keeping in mind, it is just one. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana rather than paying its actual mana cost. This card to me seems absolutely perfect for black and it really does feature that ninjutsu mechanic extraordinarily well. Being able to steal stuff from the opponent's deck or just get the big value spell that you need from your deck to really go off or really function is a really powerful mechanic. Not only that, but on top of it, you have to pay life to play the spell. Now, certainly there are some repercussions to that. If it's late game and you don't have enough life total to really get going, certainly that can be a problem, but you do still exile the cards from the opponent's deck, which is obviously in itself a little inherently beneficial. Now, the upside to paying life is that you can leave mana available for whatever you need to do. And in this case, paying that ninjutsu cost is the first thing in that step. 
Four mana is pretty average for a ninjutsu spell, but the important thing to note here is you can pay that mana, get this out on the field, and still be able to play the card right off the top of the deck immediately, that second main phase, if you would like to. I think that's a really important thing to note because otherwise it would be really useless to tap out all your mana just to get this out and then have basically a wasted trigger for a turn. So all in all, I really like the design of this card, and it's really just something I'm looking forward to building around. Moving on to red, we have another one of my favorites. You'll hear that a lot, Invoke Calamity. Invoke Calamity is an instant speed spell for one and four red that says, you may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with mana value six or less from your graveyard and or your hand without paying their mana costs. If those spells would be put into the graveyard, exile them instead, and then of course exile Invoke Calamity. There are two main factors that make this card very appealing to me. The first is its instant speed. You can do this at any time, and that grants instant speed to the sorceries that you may or may not play off of this card. What I mean by that is if you choose to play a sorcery speed spell off of this, it does get played at instant speed because this is the instant, so it gets cast immediately right after you play the Invoke Calamity. On top of that, you also are gaining mana in this transaction. You pay 5 mana for the Invoke Calamity spell, but you're getting 6 mana value worth of cards off of it. Now important to note here, you do get 6 mana total value, so it's not like you can get 2 6 drops, you would have to get 2 3 drops, or a 5 drop and a 1 drop, or just 1 6 drop, you don't even have to pull 2 cards. All that to say though, this is just good value in my opinion, and I cannot wait to see some of the busted stuff that we might be able to do with this, especially with being able to grant that instant speed to a sorcery speed spell. Next up, we are jumping into green, and we have Kadama of the West Tree as my favorite pick. Kodama of the West Tree is two and a green for a legendary creature spirit. It does have reach. It also has modified creatures you control have trample. Now, modified is a new keyword from this set that basically says if anything is equipped, has an aura on it, or has a counter on it, they qualify as a modified spell. Now, additionally, whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your deck. It also happens to be a 3-3 creature. Now, there are some important things to note here, some really, really crucial things that I would like to touch on. First and foremost, this features the new modified mechanic, which I absolutely love. I think it's great to have a keyword for that because now we can have cards like this that say all modified creatures have trample, that just seems really powerful to me. Additionally though, this is actually a really cheap spell. For green, a three mana spell really doesn't take that long to get out. Obviously max, it's gonna be turn three, but on top of that, you actually get to ramp with this spell, and I think that that's really, really important. Think of this with things like Scoot Swarm in Standard right now. If you have a modified creature dealing damage to the opponent that you're able to search out your deck for those basic land cards, not only can that fix you, because you can obviously get any color that you would need in that basic land slot, but you also trigger a lot of the landfall mechanics that we've already got in standard already existing. Now there are some other things, things like that reach that, uh, you know, kind of help out. It's not a huge buff by any means, but it does protect you against flyers, which could be really beneficial depending on the deck, obviously, that you're against. All in all, this card seems like a really good enabler and a really good engine for a lot of the modified mechanics, a lot of the landfall mechanics, and I think this will bring those two together in a really powerful way. With all the mono colors out of the way, we jump into to multicolor. I'm grouping all of them together for this, but I, you guys, I had to pick Tamiyo Completed Sage. New Tamiyo is very interesting for a lot of reasons. Let's talk through it really quickly. First of all, it costs two, a green, a blue, and Phyrexian hybrid mana of either blue or green. Now, that Phyrexian mana does come with a bit of a price. I think they were fixing it from previous versions of Phyrexian mana that basically says if you paid that Phyrexian mana, which is equal to two life versus paying the actual green or blue cost, it enters the, the battlefield with two fewer loyalty counters on it. Now, that is pretty relevant depending on what you want to do. As we look through those mechanics, you'll kind of see why. First and foremost, plus one, tap up to one target artifact effect or creature, it does not untap during its controller's next untap step. That actually really helps to serve and provide a bit of a lockdown mechanic for the opponent's board, helps protect Tamiyo if there is only one or two creatures out that maybe you can get it out for a couple of turns versus them just attacking in on the following turn and taking her off the field. Now the minus X mechanic is truthfully why I really like Tamiyo. It says minus X, exile target non-land permanent card with mana value X from your graveyard. 
create a token that is a copy of that card. This provides you with so many reanimation possibilities, it is ridiculous. First and foremost, it does not have to be a creature. It is a non-land permanent. It could be an enchantment, an artifact, anything that you want it to be, including other planeswalkers. Now that makes this really interesting. I'm actually kind of curious if you could combo off somehow with this, uh, maybe with something that says enter a, you know, a planeswalker onto the battlefield or something like that, where you have a Tamiyo in the graveyard, you minus the Tamiyo to get the other Tamiyo, and then you just continuously do that. Now, all that to say, that's speculation, but the reanimation portion of this is genuinely exciting. Being able to bring some stuff back from the graveyard is something I always look to do. Finally, that minus seven ability says, create Tamiyo's notebook, a legendary colorless artifact token with spells you cast cost two less to cast. And then you can also tap it to draw a card. Obviously, there's a lot of long-term value with that minus seven, so that is certainly the goal. I think we are going to see some decks with boring clex, things like that, that can really pop this off immediately, either get a huge reanimation target out from the graveyard, or just immediately hit that minus seven and get long-term value for your deck. All in all, we're also getting a lot of channel abilities in this set that'll help ramp you if you would like to, so this might be a card that we see in a good like solid mid-range reanimator deck, something along those lines. Uh, one final thing to note here, a uh, little little sad that uh, Tamiya is now a Phyrexian, but it is kind of a cool card, so I'm actually okay with it. Moving on to artifacts, we have an absolute bomb of a card, Mirrorbox. Mirrorbox is a three mana artifact that says the legend rule does not apply to permanents you control. It also says each legendary creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and each non-token creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with the same name as that creature. Now, this is a really interesting card because we have seen a lot of things that can combo with this, some very powerful effects, just getting extra legendaries or extra very powerful cards like legendaries with the same name out is actually kind of busted. Now on top of that, we have also seen a rise in the Bard class Gruul deck, which does feature quite a number of legendary creatures, and I think this slots in absolutely perfectly into that list. Being able to get rid of that legend rule and just play whatever you want to play and get all the added benefits is absolutely phenomenal. Not only that, but they also just get a Lord effect on top of that, and if you've got multiples out, you just get more of it. All that to say, this has been a card that has kind of garnished a lot of speculation as, is it too powerful? Is it too good for the standard environment? We'll see how that all shakes out, of course, in the next few weeks, but all that to say, it's going to be a really sick card. Finally, guys, we come to the land slot, and I mentioned at the top of the video, we had a bit of a caveat with this one, and that is to say that it's actually five cards that we're going to be talking about here. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about each of these, but I did want to throw these up on screen because they are some very powerful cards. It's the full legendary land cycle we're getting in the new set. Each of these legendary lands features a very powerful channel ability that really solidifies it in the color that it represents. As an example, uh, the white legendary land, the Seat of the Empire, uh, has a channel ability that says two and a white, discard it, and it deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. One thing to note here, all of them feature that little discount ability, so if you have a lot of legendary creatures out, these get obviously quite a bit better. But you can see how just in that Seat of the Empire example, the, the card really represents its color. We've seen that deal damage to an attacking or blocking creature all throughout White's history. It's kind of nice here to see it on a land, something that you can discard from your hand and use that ability. It adds a lot of flexibility to decks because you're not only getting a land, but you're also getting that kind of removal spell in this case. All right, guys, those are my top picks for cards that I cannot wait to build around in this set. Like I said, there was a bit of a caveat with the lands, but everything else just looks incredibly exciting. There are plenty more cards that I can't wait to get my hands on, and I'm sure you guys have some that you would like to share. Please feel free to do that in the comment section below. Guys, don't forget also, we have a giveaway going on for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. If you would like to enter that, all you got to do is subscribe. Super easy. We've got other ways you can enter as well, so check out all the details on our homepage. You can check out the video there, or you have an article linked uh, over on our website at itresolvesmtg.com. All that being said, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys are excited for this new set. I do think it's going to be an exciting one, and I hope you guys get your hands on some awesome cards. Thank you again for watching, guys. I'll see you later.